Well, welcome to Pure Up Ministries and the Ignited Mentoring Series. I'm glad you're joining me. We're talking about the secret place, and I want to share with you part two on the steps and how to enter with insight from Smith Wigglesworth. We're going to look at this from a different angle because I want to build in you a real firm foundation built upon the Word, and that the Holy Spirit would give you such a rich revelation from the Word so that you get a hold of this and you dwell permanently in that secret place. It is your inheritance. It's your right. And I want you to come to the place where you get a real revelation that God desires that you might have life and that abundantly, that you're not surviving. And we talked a little bit this last time where you have the outer, inner uh, courts, and of course the Holy of Holies in the tabernacle and temp uh, temple of the Old Testament. And it speaks of our relationship, that I don't want you to be in the outer court where you have that encounter or that knowing and that wonderful religious experience, but you're not changed. I don't want you to abide in the inner court where you are changed and you get to know Him, but your relationship is built upon the natural and having your needs met. I want you to go beyond the veil and have that relationship and you have life in that abundantly, that you are overflowing because that's the place that God desires. So that you have an encounter and that every minute that you wake up and you're walking through life, you're living it. No matter your circumstances, your situation, you enjoy life. You're filled with life, and you're blessed to be a blessing. There's something in you. There's a life in you because you have seen life manifested to you. It's in you. It's changing you in the secret place. Amen? So we come, Father, in the precious name of Jesus, and I just pray for each person. They be blessed, encouraged in you, built up in you. Holy Spirit, come and open our eyes and see ears to hear and minister to us. Give us revelation of the Word today. Let us see through the Word what Jesus did for us, and let us get such a revelation to receive that. And Father, let it have an impact in us. And let it bear fruit in us according to your purpose. So that, Father, in all things and all ways that you were glorified, Jesus, your Lordship is declared and decreed over us. I thank you, Holy Spirit. I thank you, Father. In the precious name of Jesus, Father, we pray. Amen. Now, let's start, of course, in the Word. And today I want to start in Hebrews eleven six. 6. Okay? And it says, And without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of those who seek him. And then I want to read Psalm 27, 5. For in the day of trouble he will conceal me in his tabernacle, in the secret place of his tent he will hide me, he will lift me upon a rock. And God wants you to get a revelation that you are called to dwell permanently in the secret place, that you come by faith, and that God's desire is that in the secret place you are lifted. That you no longer live according to the natural order, but like Romans 8 says, the spiritual order, where your mind is set on the things of the Spirit, and now you have this relationship with the Father. But the first step I want you to get hold of today is that our confidence, your confidence, must be built upon Him and in Him and in His Word. We discover, of course, in John 14, verse 1, you know, do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. And so your confidence must be not in you, not in how you feel. You may wake up today and you may have had a great day. And glory to God, I'm in a wonderful place with God and I feel saved. I feel like I'm in the secret place. And then there's days you get up and you feel like, God, have you forsaken me? You do not walk based on how you feel. You don't walk based on your circumstances. You walk based on the authority of the word. Because the enemy, the world, the flesh, and the devil will lie, deceive, and try to steal from you your inheritance and keep you out. And so your flesh may, may not feel like it. Well, tell your flesh. Tell your feelings. Tell them based on the word. Because I'm not saved based on what men say. I'm not based on what I say. I'm not based on what anybody else, I'm based on what the Word says. And so my confidence must always be built upon Him. And so you must learn how to walk confident in Him, not in your circumstance. Smith said this, It is necessary that we find our bearings in this Word. There is nothing that will bring to you such confidence as a life well-pleasing to Him. And in the secret place, I have a relationship with Him. I can look upon His face and see His smile. My affirmation, my confirmation of my right standing is in the smile through the Word. And the Holy Ghost opening this Word and it speaks to me depth and it speaks richness to me. And I discover who I am and I stand on that. And everything the Word says I am, I am. Amen? Because my confidence is in the Word. Smith said this, But you cannot ask with confidence until there's perfect union between you and God. 
as there was always perfect union between God and Jesus. This foundation is confidence and fidelity to God. And so in this secret place, I come knowing that what? Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So I come believing that He is and that He is the rewarder. And I come because I want to know you, God. I come because my confidence is in the blood. As I enter in, I look and I put and focus on that. God, the price was paid. My confidence is in the finished work of the cross. You cannot go beyond the veil without a revelation and seeing the blood of Jesus, seeing the price that he paid and not being touched and wrecked by it. And Father, I come and have a relationship with you as I focus upon what Jesus did and I look to that. I honor the blood. I give glory to the blood and I'm grateful that the blood paid the price, not me, not based on anything I feel or think. I will not disqualify myself from what God qualified me through. And I thank you, Father God, for the finished work of the cross in my life. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, just give me a deeper revelation of that. Number two is that we walk by faith, okay? In Re uh, Hebrews eleven thirty-eight, 38, but my righteous one shall live by faith. In Romans 1, 17, for in the righteousness of God, it is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, but the righteous man shall live by faith. And we walk by faith, not by how we feel. We walk by faith. And remember, without faith, it's impossible to please God because we must first believe that He is. And if you can get a hold of that He is, you got faith. Simple faith. The faith the size of a mustard seed can move a mountain. We don't need great mighty faith. We've all been given the measure of faith. Now, let me go on with this. Smith said this, there's a rest of faith. There's a faith that rests in the confidence on God. God's promises never fail. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 17. The Word of God can create a resistless faith, a faith that is never daunted, a faith that never gives up, a faith that never fails. And in the secret place, all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost opens His Word, so I'm not reading it from an intellectual understanding. I'm not standing based on somebody else's revelation of it. I am getting a revelation myself as the Holy Spirit speaks to me. He is my teacher and shows me in it what Jesus did for me and who I now am because of it what it means to me. And as I apply that to my life, it brings a foundation. I hear. And as I hear, faith arises because this word is living if you allow the Holy Ghost to breathe on it in the secret place. And the secret place, I mean, you cannot help but walk by faith because in the secret place, the atmosphere is filled with faith because the word is living. It produces faith as you hear it. Hallelujah. Because you get a greater revelation of God and what He is and who He is. Smith said this, How great should be our faith, for we cannot be saved except by faith. We cannot be kept but by faith. We cannot be baptized by faith. So we can only be baptized by faith. And we will be caught up by faith. Therefore, what a blessed reality is faith in the living God. And you should have such a revelation. How, how much faith did it take to get saved? It took a simple trusting in the Word. And that's faith. Simple trusting in the confidence in God and in His Word. Where I don't lean on me. I don't lean on my feelings. I don't lean on my opinions. I lean on the authority of the Word and I place faith in that. And I let the Holy Ghost speak it to me. I want to hear it from the Holy Spirit. I want the Holy Ghost to speak it loud so that it reverberates in me. And it does something. It changes. It shakes loose every unbelief. And it stirs a solid, rock-solid faith in me that refuses to back down, quit, and always presses forward. Smith said this, It is the personal inward flow of divine favor. He's talking about faith, okay? Which moves in every fiber of our being until our whole nature is so quickened that we live by faith. We move by faith. We are going to be caught up to glory by faith, for faith is the victory. In the secret place, I want you to know that that atmosphere is so filled with faith, it begins to permeate. It begins to infuse into every part of your being and change you because you hear the word. Jesus is so real. The reality of Jesus grows and the word. And it speaks louder to you than anything else, than your the world, the flesh, or the devil. And now we're in a glorious place. Smith said this, if you build upon anything else but the Word of God, on imagination, on sentimentality, uh, uh, or any feelings, or any special joy, it will mean nothing without you have a foundation. And the foundation you have to build will be the Word of God. 
the word, hearing the word by the Holy Spirit. That must be not the opinions of men, not the doctrines of a church, not anything else, but the word. And so we must always come back, not we must always line up with the word, line upon lines, you know, let the Holy Spirit, it should bear fruit. It should magnify, glorify Jesus and bear the fruit of the Spirit. If it's a real revelation of the word, hallelujah, not an Old Testament law that brings death because the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And many people build themselves upon a legalistic hearing of the word. And I'm not talking about that. I'm talking where the Holy Spirit opens it up and there's a life to it and it brings life and it comes forth bearing the fruit of the Holy Spirit and it honors Jesus and it always points to the finished work of the cross. Anything that I say, thus saith the Lord, where I'm standing on the word, it should always point to and glorify Jesus as Lord and what he did on the cross and how it's accomplished. Amen. The word of God will bring you to a wonderful place of rest of faith. And that's one of the things that now I'm no longer trying in my ability to make this thing happen, trying to get in the secret place, but I'm coming in a rest of faith in the Word. And every day I can get up, no matter what I face, no matter how I feel, I stand in a rest of faith on the Word as my final authority, and I receive. I am all that this Word says I am. Hallelujah. But we, and my next point is we receive by faith, okay? So God wants you to come in. But remember, he is the rewarder. So we come to receive something. Uh, Smith said this, You know, beloved, that there are many wonderful treasures in the storehouse of God that we've not yet gotten. And God has so much more for us. Now, let me get a hold of this with you. That we so often focus on the natural, all our needs, all our lusts and our desires. In the secret place, you can't. Now, God wants to bless you in the natural realm, but there's so much more God wants to impart to you a life and he wants to bless you with such life in you that it overflows and you have something to give. And no matter what your circumstance, you're always in life. Your joy, your satisfaction doesn't come through things. It comes through him. And you have life and that abundant. Hallelujah. And that is secret place dwelling. Smith said, the Lord has one great plan to reveal to us that we are so much greater than we know, a thousand times greater than you have conception of. The word of the Lord will reveal these, that these things are possible if you dare believe, and signs and wonders are within reach of all of us. And so now you start to understand how God can use you, how God can do something bigger in and through you, that you are more than a conqueror because my confidence and my rest of faith is on the Word, not on me, not on my abilities, not on my strengths, not on my holiness, not on anything regarding me. I'm not making me holy, the Holy Spirit is. I am being what sanctified by the Word as I receive it as authority by the Holy Spirit. It's changing me as I choose to think this, to fix my mind on this. It is changing me. Hallelujah. And God is trying to bring you into something greater. God wants to use you mightily in this hour where we no longer focus on our needs, but we're there to meet the needs of others, which is life. And you cannot give what you don't have. And so God wants in the secret place to so pour into you that there's an overflow from you. Amen. I hope you're getting this. Smith said, I see the plan of God is so much greater than all else. If I, if I have him, I have life in me. I have an abundance of this life. Can you please get that? In the secret place that you receive that life and that abundant in Him, that always you are enjoying life. You're able to stop and smell the roses and enjoy life to the fullest because of Him. You enjoy, you get out of bed, God, I'm grateful for another day to accomplish something big for you, to enjoy life. We're not focused on when I get to heaven, but glory to God, that kingdom come, that will be done in this vessel on earth. Heaven in this vessel on earth magnifying, glorifying Jesus all day, all the time. Amen? My fourth step is that we will be changed. You've got to be changed. Smith said this, How exhaustless is the treasure house of the Most High! How near God is to us when we are willing to draw nigh! And how He comes with refreshings to us when our hearts are attuned and desires Him only, for the desires of the righteous shall be granted. So as you start to dwell in the secret place, you become more in tune with Him. You have to. And now my focus is on Him and seeing Him glorified. So I'm no longer caught up in the natural that, God, I want this and I want that. I want you, Lord. 
there's a change and there's a trust because as I seek first his kingdom, his righteousness, all these other things that I need are given to me. But my greatest desire is for him. And I'm now in tune with him. And this is a life where you're blessed. I mean, you're blessed out of your socks. Smith said, so many people miss a great many things because they're always on the line of thinking it was for somebody else. I want you to know that God's word is for you and you are to make personal application for all there is in Scripture. And so every precious promise as you stand in the secret place, I want you to get a revelation. It is yours. And it's a yes and amen for you. Don't disqualify you. But I'm not worthy. It's for them. God is speaking to you in the secret place, and He wants you to receive. He wants you to be changed and transformed. He wants you to come into the fullness of who you are, your inheritance in Him. So you've got to shake off some things. Stubbornness. We've got to shake off our own pride, our own opinions, our own thoughts. They have to bow and be brought captive to the Lord Jesus. I mean, there's things we've held on for years. Must be brought captive and surrendered so that Jesus, I am all that you say that I am, and I receive all that you say that you've given me. So it said, it's a great purpose that God has for us, that we be changed. And you're in a great place when you're willing to have this change take place. Where, God, I want to hear. And I want to bow. And I don't want anything that kills, steals, or destroys to have an authority in my life anymore. I want that which the Spirit speaks, that has life, the Word. No longer the opinions of men, no longer dragged by weird voices and impressions, but living solidly and hearing the word by the Holy Spirit. And there's a life to it, and there's a change to it. And the per- proof of it is that as I'm changed, the fruit of the Spirit comes forth. Anything that truly is of the Spirit produces the fruit of the Spirit. And so when I say, well, I hear this voice, I would test it. And everything should line up with the word and should produce the fruit. And if it's killing, stealing, and destroying, well, kill it. If it's producing life and that abundant, and it's producing the fruit, love, joy, peace, and it's taking you deeper, and it's drawing you closer, well, that's a good thing. Because remember that anything of the Spirit declares that Jesus is Lord. It will always magnify the finished work of the cross. It always points to Jesus. And if anything's pointing to me, to my unworthiness, are trying to disqualify me in of myself instead of dragging, draw me to the cross and say, look to the cross. Now I may get convicted of sin, but it'll always point to the cross. It'll always point to the finished work of the cross. And when I get washed by the blood, it will point to the righteousness that comes through the cross. Not that you are unworthy, you're disqualified, you've lost it. It wants to bring a place of a new hope in Jesus. Now let me continue. Smith said, you are greater in a greater place when you're willing to drop everything that has brought you to where you thought you could not be changed. And when you have dropped all things that have hindered you and you've leaped forth and been tremendously changed. And God wants to change you. God is so much more for you. If we are willing to come to the place and allow the Holy Spirit to change us, he must have access to every part of your being. Even the areas that we cover because we're ashamed of, we're humiliated by, and we don't want to touch. We want nobody to know. But in the secret place, it's a secret place and it's a safe place where I can open up and allow the Holy Spirit to bring such a change in me so that I truly step into my inheritance of who I am in Christ. Smith said this, If you have anything on a human plane, no matter how it has come, if it is not according to the biblical standard of the Word of God, let it be weeded out. If you don't get it weeded out, there's time coming that wood, hay, stubble will be burned and the gold, silver, and the precious stones will stand the fire. And I want to have something that stands the fire. I want you to get something that stands the fire, that you produce something of life and that you allow yourself to be changed in the secret place. So even right now, let everything, every opinion, every thought be exposed by the Spirit of God. Let it fall that which is of the enemy or the flesh or the devil. Let it fall, Father God. Let it be exposed and let your truth, the Holy Spirit of truth, come and bring such a holy conviction. And let us see the cross. Let us see the finished work of the cross. Let us boast and brag of the cross and in you, Jesus, and what you did and our hope and our security is in you, Jesus. And I thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done for us. I thank you for the blood and my confidence in the blood. Holy Spirit, let my foundation be hearing and doing the word. Bring it to life. Let it have such a depth and a revelation and understanding. Let it give me knowledge, Father God. I thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Take me deeper than I've ever been. Holy Spirit, draw me closer by your mighty hand. Father, I bless you, and I just want to know you, Father. Put in me a greater hunger and a thirst 
rest for you. Fill me, Holy Spirit, from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. I thank you, Father, that Jesus, you are Lord. You are Lord, and I just boast in you, and I brag in you, and I thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I want to thank you for watching. I want to encourage you, please subscribe and like, because as you do, it helps the algorithms at Google for us to reach more people. We're seeing so many people touched and changed and backsliders brought back. Help us achieve that. And I also encourage you, please consider joining our prayer partnership team. It won't cost you anything. You don't have to pledge or give any money. And I also want to say that anybody asking money is a scam artist. Please ignore and pray for them. We do not put comments asking for money or email you or anything else. Amen. If you choose by the Spirit to financially give, great, but we're not seeking of you. Amen? Now, please consider joining our prayer partnership team. More information is below. You go to our website, you go to our partner page, and you sign up. And once we get that information or email, we'll send you invites. We're continuing to build this thing, and we're looking forward to times where the Zoom meetings where we can minister together, minister the Holy Spirit, and be changed by His mighty hand. Amen? Well, I just want to let you know that we're praying for you. Be praying for us. Be blessed. Be encouraged in the precious name of Jesus. These are exciting days, and you should be filled with life and joy, drinking from the well of salvation daily, enjoying life to the fullest, looking up for your redemption draws nigh. In Jesus' name, amen.